proud that we have the opportunity here. My name is Heinrich Popov. I'm coming from the company called Otto Bock. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I'm a, you told me not to say that, but I'm a, I'm a former Paralympian. I'm okay with this to say that. Um, so I'm pretty happy to get this opportunity to uh, spread the word out for the Paralympic community and uh, being here in LA, it's unbelievable. And I think we will have a nice discussion. So great people on the panel. Um, we have former gold medalist, present gold medalist, and I don't want to put too much pressure on you. <laughs> no pressure. I like the pressure. It's okay. As future gold medalist. So um, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. Uh, we as Ottobock, we are supporting the Paralympic family since 1988 with the service within the Games. We are trying to make the legs ready for the competitions for the athletes. And uh, I'm now a CPO and I had the wonderful chance to work with this young gentleman uh, in Tokyo before his competition and maybe you introduce yourself and then you give the mic to next uh, panel and then uh, we will go through uh, introducing yourself and we will have a nice conversation. Thank you very much for having us. Perfect, perfect. Um, hi everybody, for those of you who, who don't know me, my name is Ezra Freck. Uh, I'm 17 years old. Uh, thank you, Charlie, for the clap. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm 17 years old. I, I go to high school here in Los Angeles, California. I'm an above-the-knee amputee, and uh, yeah, I competed in the Tokyo Paralympics in track and field. I competed in the high jump, the long jump, and uh, I placed fifth in the high jump, eighth in the long jump, and then now I'm preparing for Paris in 2024. And then, of course, when the Games come to L.A. in 2028, home city, hometown, and so I'm, I'm very grateful to be up on the panel with these distinguished athletes and gold medalists and hope I can follow in their footsteps one day, so. Yeah, really nice. Um, this was yours. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my name is Johannes Floss. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm a yeah, below the knee amputee, uh, current Paralympian and um, mechanical engineer as well. So I'm on one side, I'm an athlete and on the other side, I'm working with Autobox on future prosthetic legs and feet. And um, those for the daily life, but even though those for the sport, the future sport. And um, yeah, as a Paralympian, I'm a sprinter, 100, 400 and 200 meters. And the current world record holder over those three distances. <laughs> The fastest man ever on prosthetic legs, That's right awesome. here. <laughs> uh, the 100 meters in 10.5 seconds. So um, that is, thanks, yeah, it's pretty fast. <laughs> and um, yeah, currently looking forward to prepare for the Paralympic Games 2024, but uh, we all looking ahead for the future. And so 2028 is always the next step. So preparing everything, preparing the company, preparing the Los Angeles for it. So um, it's the first time here and I think it's going to be really great. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I guess it's my turn. Um, well, I'm not a track and field athlete. I'm a diver. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, it's so incredible what Otto Bach, Bach is doing, you know, to help uh, athletes. And also, you know, it's all about self-esteem too because you build your self-esteem in your sport and you have success there. And so it gives you a sense that you can achieve anything. So sport is so important to all of us mentally, physically, and uh, emotionally. It really is incredible. So I really appreciate what Otto Bach is doing, enabling other individuals who wouldn't normally have this opportunity to have uh, success. And also, once an Olympian or Paralympian, always an Olympian and Paralympian. Thank you very much. Thanks for your words. Uh, we appreciate that. And you said something, Craig, that's really important also for us people with a disability, sport. Um, sport, and uh, we will see later kids running around on blades. Sport. To be honest, um, I see myself when I lost my leg when I was nine years old due to cancer. And 
the life was changing, but the only thing that wasn't changing was sport. So sports doesn't make any difference within people. So this is the best medicine we can have, and this is the best motivation we can have also for the future. So therefore, sports for all of us is so important, and we're pretty happy to, to see the young kids running around and just enjoying the wind blowing in their face. So for us, uh, and Ezra, you as a young athlete, um, what does it mean for you? I know like you were born 2005. I already did my first games 2004. Um, and I remember myself really struggling to get into the para sports. And uh, how's it with you? What, what, what kind of wish you have for the future or what are the challenges you face right now? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, for, for me and, and for people with disabilities as a whole, Everywhere you go, oftentimes you don't feel like you belong. There's always people staring, always people pointing fingers and whispering. And growing up, often many times I felt like a zoo animal in a sense, that everywhere I went, I was always a center of attention in not necessarily a positive way. And sports was the one place where I could go where I wasn't just labeled with the identity of a kid with a disability, right? I was, I was one of the guys. I was one of the athletes. I was, I was doing something that I loved, and I was separating myself from that that hovering identity of always being a kid with a disability. And so it was an escape for me for a very long time and it still is to this day. I mean, as an amputee, you're often underestimated. People don't think you can do things the same way. People didn't expect me to be an athlete or play sports. And so it allowed me to escape from as well those people underestimating me, counting me out. And I, I, growing up, I played pretty much every sport, whether it was basketball, soccer, football, whatever was in season, I was playing. And when I was 11 years old, I was watching the Rio 2016 Paralympics and I was watching the Rio games and I was so inspired. I was so motivated. It was almost like the universe had come down in this one moment and told me this was your calling. This is what you were meant to do. And so from that moment forward, I, I told my family, I told my friends, I told everybody, I said, I'm going to make the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic team. And then five years later of hard work, of dedication, we all know what that's like. I made the team and, and my dream came true. So that's originally how, I, how it all got started. It's unbelievable. Thank you very much for your words. I got goosebumps because you're talking about Rio. That was my last competition. I yes. decided to retire after Rio and you decided to start. This is amazing. So... Johannes, you, um, I remember you told me your story. Um, you were born with a, a fibula disease. Um, you had your feet for 16 years, you were struggling, and then you decided to amputate your legs. Um, how does that come? Like amputating legs that you have to be able to run around or why? Like, this is a weird question, but, um, how did sports and this decision change your life? So, well, um, basically, um, in the age of 16, when I made this decision, uh, I was 160, but with a normal upper body. So everything was fine except my feet, except my lower leg. And the biggest problem I had was be only being able to walk and stand for like 10 minutes. So every school activity, I was out. I, w I, I knew beforehand I would have pain. So I stepped out and stepped a lot. So I missed a few, a really a few, like maybe important steps from classes, from friends. And um, this was a point where I just said to myself, I don't want this anymore. The only sport I was able to do was swimming because uh, my feet wouldn't be like, uh, had any pressure on, but um, yeah, so after, of course, a lot of thinking and talking to doctors, we made this decision to amputate my legs. And to be honest, it was the best decision I've ever made. And not because I'm here and uh, being now the fastest guy <laughs> with no legs, but I have a painless life. So I'm pain free completely. And for me, one of the best things, I'm now on eye level with close to anyone. So I'm not a 160 anymore. I'm, I look normal. And, with prosthetics now, I look, I have my robot legs, they are black, they are carbon fiber. This looks really cool, I love it. And beforehand, I look disabled, to be honest. And now, people don't look at me like before. Now they look, 
like hey you have cool legs and before it was like ah oh, what's this it's crazy that looks that looks weird what do you have so that's also like uh, I know what he said in the morning like we were talking about Michael Johnson's coming and then he asked how tall is he and uh, everyone was saying like he's tall and then uh, Johanna said like yeah then give me some new legs I will make myself taller <laughs> so benefits like, of being a double amputee yeah, you yeah. can change the height depending the height, yeah, so. yeah. advantages everywhere <laughs> so, so you have to keep the things that comes into your life positively and uh, Craig we know like uh, all the athletes in the world know how tough you are as an athlete uh, we remember all your jump hitting your uh, or cracking your neck hitting your head and then the next jump was the gold medal how is that possible okay. um yeah i mean I, i i really can't stress enough how important autobach is and being able to enable a lot of people being an able-bodied person you know to you know have this community you know the sports community to have that support to build self-esteem and all that and mental health and that connection you know and life is about that's what it, life is about it's about connection oh, nice <laughs> and g's making himself at home um this is my hungarian pumi g so we're in training to uh for dog agility so my hopes for him is to make world team okay that's nice maybe yeah. maybe johannes can you can you can take her for the next training sessions yeah, yeah. why not <laughs> some temper runs yeah <laughs> So, but uh, how is it like, like this mindset you showed in that competition? So maybe like, I just want to try to, you? yeah, please. And I would like to, to make a bridge to, to Ezra uh, because 1984, where was the games? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. 2028, where is the game? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. So Coming back. you have to share the mindset for the future gold medalists. So yeah. therefore tell, Okay, our so, future yeah so um you brought up a couple of things and uh, i'll focus on the the one after hitting my head on the board um i mean when something like that happens you don't anticipate anything like that happening i mean i was thinking oh my god i'm supposed to be a really good diver but you know i go and hit my head on the board good divers don't hit their head on the board you know when i hit my head on the board and i crash in the water my first thought was i was embarrassed I was embarrassed, I was thinking, how do I get out of this pool without anybody seeing me? And the entire world is watching. And so, you know, I made my way to my coach, Juan O'Brien, and I'm, I'm a firm believer, you don't achieve greatness on your own. There's always somebody there. And for me, at that moment in time, that was my coach. It was, took all 10 years of our love, respect, and love for each other, you know, to get through that. Because you can't do it on your own, because when something, After hitting my head on the board, all your confidence is just shattered. You have no confidence. And so one thing that my coach, Ron O'Brien, he turned to me and said, I know you don't believe in yourself, but believe in me because I believe in you. So even when you don't have that belief in yourself, you know, there's somebody out there that has that belief. And I remember I was doing a reverse one and a half with three and a half twist was my very next dive. So I set the board, they announced the dive, and I could hear an audible gasp from the audience because the dive that I hit on was a reverse two and a half pike. So it was going in the same direction and I didn't have time to figure out what the hell I did wrong <laughs> to, to avoid that. And so when I rolled the, the fulcrum back and I heard an audible gasp from the audience, I took a deep breath and patted my chest because I felt like my heart was pumping outside of my chest. And the people in the vicinity who saw that chuckled. They were like laughing. It's like, oh my God, he's scared. We're scared for him. And so then there was this exchange. I started laughing. I was like, oh my God, these people are in my corner. And so, You know, the last, the, once I took, before I took that first step of that approach, I was thinking, okay, this is the Olympic Games. You can't hold back. And I had no idea what was going to happen. I didn't know if I was going to hit the board again. I didn't, it was like, I didn't know. But trusting, having that faith, you know, to let go of all judgment, because that's what flow is all about. There is no judgment in flow. There's only do. 
It's that present moment. And so in reaching that, I did my reverse one and a half or three and a half twists. And I came up out of the water and the crowd was going nuts. And as it turned out, it was the highest scoring dive of that Olympic Games. So, yeah. Unbelievable. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your words. And thank you. And believing in yourself, have the right people besides you. This is something we also do as a company. We do the running clinics all over the world, looking for talents, called talent days. Myself, I think, and, and Ezra, um, I would like to come back to you with a question. So I wouldn't be the person I am today without meeting the right person at the right time. So it's always important in daily life and also important in, in sports. So, and I know, I know you're, you're creating your team for, for the future, but you already uh, set some big footsteps for, for, for the uh, upcoming generation. So you're the co-founder of Angel City Sports. Um, you taking care of the young generation, like, you're the one, you are the young generation. How does it come that you already taking responsibility for those big, big moves? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I just want to first off say thank you for all of that. It's, it's so beautiful to, to hear the behind the scenes and to hear that stuff about how even you were still scared, right? In the moment, you know, you pull off this amazing dive and everyone's like, wow, how did he do it? But at the end of the day, you were sitting up there like, how am I going to do this? And so that's reassuring to hear that sometimes even the gold medalists don't have it fully figured out at that moment, which is, which is amazing to hear. Next time you fall down, when you do the long jump takeoff, yeah. <laughs> remember these words. I will. Don't ask yourself. I will. Go I will. back on the run up and do it again. I will. I will. Seriously. Um, and so as far as, as, far as our, our nonprofit, which is what we are raising money for here at Gold Meets Golden, um, roughly 10 years ago, my family and I started the nonprofit Angel City Sports because we recognized that there wasn't adaptive sports opportunities for people with physical disabilities. I mean, if you're in a wheelchair, you can't just roll up to the YMCA and play wheelchair basketball. You have to get a wheelchair basketball chair. For, for many amputees, they have to get running blades, which are difficult to get. And there's lots of barriers for people with physical disabilities to get into sport. And we recognized this and we wanted to, to start a nonprofit because we know the power of sport. Like you were saying earlier, we know what it does for you physically, psychologically, what it does for your soul. And so we wanted to bring that, use sport to bring the community together, particularly the disabled community. Um, and so we started the nonprofit roughly, roughly 10 years ago in, in Los Angeles uh, because we want to build that legacy, build the next generation, build the future generation so that when the games come to LA, the city understands Paralympics. They understand adaptive sports. We can fill the stands with people that are passionate about this. And so that's really important to us. Um, and then that's, that's the reason we started the nonprofit because we believe in the power of sport and building awareness. Because at the end of the day, many people with physical disabilities are told sports is not for them, right? Oftentimes they don't even know that sports is possible. And so what we're doing by building awareness, by, by bridging the gap between Olympic and Paralympic sports and, and able-bodied and adaptive sports and getting people to understand so that one day and, and hopefully very soon leading up to the games, all people with physical disabilities know sports is possible for them and have access to it. That's, that's our goal. Thank you very much. Thanks for your words and thank you for your work as well. So I, I, so I used to be an athlete 18 years long, but I never met an athlete like you already thinking about the future of yourself and also the future of the upcoming athlete. So this is definitely the right mindset to become a gold medalist. No thank worries you, about uh, training, no worries about pressure. So <laughs> if you keep that mindset and you keep helping people, it will come back to you. So. Everything you Thank share you. with other people will come back to you. So no worries for you. Everything is set up for the future. Um, LA people, you can be proud of him. Um, so Johannes, um, I heard like you were talking about Paris. Yeah, I'm, you're getting ready for Paris. Uh, and you said like, yeah, the games are coming to LA. What about you? You didn't say you're getting ready for LA. Why not? Or are you, are you thinking about um, helping I know you're a mechanical engineer, you're also an orthopedic technician, and uh, the biggest co goal we have is making prosthetic accessible to everyone. So I hope that your knowledge will be high enough to make it accessible to everyone, uh, make the legs a little bit cheaper. 
uh, or inventing legs for the future. What do you think we will have in the future? So, well, yeah, that's, that's the goal. So I only was able to start with sports because someone helped me. So um, someone found on me prosthetic legs. So my first ones was apparently Otterbock, but um, trained on them for years and till I was good enough to um, yeah, participate in my first world champs. And um, yeah, I learned a lot from other people like, yeah, I don't want to say it, but it was you as well. <laughs> so um, we fight a lot. We fought a lot, really yeah, bad. We, we shared our uh, orthopedic technician, but we had a lot of arguments about how and how not to. And But in the end, um, yeah, you were one of the people who, yeah, sent me some knowledge um, as well as our whole club and um, the knowledge of about uh, prosthetic legs, which I received. And um, at the moment, I'm at a point in my life where I want to give back. So Autobock is giving me these opportunities to support the uh, running clinics, which yeah, I helped you in um, Tokyo and in Switzerland as well. So um, apparently I can't um, help you in at every place you've, you're going to be. Still an athlete. Yeah, because I'm still, still an athlete. And yeah, as, as I said, Paris is for, uh, yeah, one of the main goals at the moment. But um, yeah, why I'm not talking about LA? Because I'm, I'm not going to say I'm going to, to run there because I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe I yeah, find a, a new sense of or meaning of life in the next few years. Um, having more fun of supporting people and uh, helping them. So I think no matter what's going to happen in the future, um, we're going to have a huge impact on the Paralympic and sportive athletes. Nice. Thank you very Love much. It. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Craig, I would love to give you the last words uh, to close up this panel discussion sure. because you can motivate us and I would love to give you the last words. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really commend Autobach to uh, allow, you know, this knowledge and these products to be able to enable people who wouldn't typically be exposed to a lot of these things and have this sense of, because sport is a sense of community. It's a, it's a, it's a sense of belonging. So it's, it's incorpor it incorporates so much of our self-esteem and you know, mental health is just so important as well to take care of the whole person, you know, spiritually, physically, emotionally. Uh, you know, so it's really important. And this is what Autobuff does, is they help you know, allow that, those good feelings, that you know, endorphin release, you know, chemicals so that we can feel good about ourselves, feel good about what we're doing, and, you know, have, you know, an incredible life's experience. And the one thing that my mother always taught me, drilled in me every, every, all the time, was make everywhere you go better because you were there. So whether it's picking up, picking up a piece of trash, whether it's smiling at somebody, I mean, you don't know, smiling at somebody at the grocery store you could be saving somebody's life, you know, and because that happened to me, I, I was feeling so low and then I was at the grocery store, somebody smiled at me and I smiled back. It's like, oh my God, you know, it's okay. Because life is always changing, you know, and just be aware of that. You know, so don't get, you know, stuck in this mindset of negativity because it's going to change. Even the positive stuff, you know, that Olympic gold medal, whichever one, you know, I uh, have four to choose from, but, you know, that's going to go away too. But to let it go with joy and gratitude and appreciation, whether it's a lesson you're learning or if it's a celebration of an accomplishment. I think there is nothing to add, uh, Greg. That's uh, fantastic. Thank you very much for your words. Johannes, thank you very much also for your words. Ezra, well done. Pressure on you. Enjoy the future. I love and, it. I love uh, it. To future. all of you guys, thank you very much for having us, giving us the opportunity. And let's enjoy the, what is it? Afternoon. Uh, it will be the afternoon. Let's enjoy the day together. Thank you very much. Yeah.